All right, y'all, I just want to point something out to you. You guys can see here, this is the Great Value, which is Walmart, the wheat and honey bread. This is also a Walmart product that's made in store, okay? You see the, the words here, freshness guaranteed. What I want to point out to you is on the back here, you will see the words, contains a bioengineered food. Generally speaking, the bioengineered food you're going to find in these things will be the wheat, the sugar, or if there's corn, corn. This one, though, it is made fresh here in the store, and it has no bioengineered foods, meaning this one is designed to go bad within a few days. This is designed to last for weeks on end. Pick the fresh every single time. I want to point out to you guys just how many things of frozen chicken are in this container, if you will. The one that still I can open on my own. There's no lock on it. There's no key. There's no code. There's no anything. You guys notice this here eight pound bag of Walmart chicken, chicken party wings, uh, flats and drumettes. Y'all, I need you to understand. The rollback price is $23.96. It used to be $33.28. They used to charge you $33.28 probably just a month ago um, for this same bag of chicken that is now $23.96. But two or three months ago, this thing was probably $12 or $14. Inflation is legit. Now listen, I talked to you guys literally a couple months ago about how this price of eggs and this egg shortage was all just, just fake BS, honestly. It made absolutely no sense how all of a sudden eggs were just gone or how all of a sudden they needed to cost five times what they cost literally the week before. And I would come to Walmart and I would show you how the 60 count of eggs was going up from $10 to $14 to $19. You need to see what it costs now. Those same 60 eggs are now $6.02 and they are stacked three high, literally all the way down. You want to tell me that that shortage suddenly ended overnight? Again, BS. So here's the thing. We have been talking about all kinds of stuff over here. We've been talking about the East Palestine, Ohio, Norfolk Southern train accident. We've been talking about the explosions at Shell refinery plants. We've talked about where the water has gone from East Palestine, Ohio, whether it was Texas, whether it was Indiana, whether it was supposed to be um, Baltimore. We've talked about a lot of different things. We even talked about the new coating on foods, on the fruits and vegetables, the Appeal, Ed Appeal is what it's called. Appeal, is, Appeal Sciences is the company. Ed Appeal is the name of this new stuff they're putting on your fruits and your vegetables to help them last longer because they're supposed to help with the oxygenation and the moisture when it comes to the fruits and vegetables. So basically hold them in and keep them out at the same time so they don't go bad as quickly, right? But what we really need to talk about, and I've talked about it numerous times over the last year plus months on this channel, is what they are legitimately doing to our food in the labs. Listen, there's no articles here today. There's no anything else. This is me talking to you from Michelle to you guys. When you go out to the stores and you're looking at the products that you want to buy, that you want to take home and you want to feed your family, I really, truly, honestly hope you are reading the back of these packages. There are so many things these days, these processed foods that we all rely on for their convenience, for their flavor, for their ease of making, which is the same thing as convenience. I know it's redundant um, for their price, because a lot of times it's so much cheaper to buy a box of um, what is it? Um, like hamburger helper or Stouffer's something or other or Marie Callender's whatever than it is to go out and buy all the individual fresh ingredients. It's a lot cheaper to buy it pre-made most of the time and it's a lot quicker to make the pre-made than it is to buy all those individual ingredients, take them home, clean them up, get them all separated, cook them, all this other stuff. A lot of people these days don't have the time and the ability or even the patience for that. A lot of people don't have the money for that. But the problem is we are so, I want to say it's our fault in the long run for not, not putting our foot down sooner when it comes to what we will spend our money on, what we are willing to eat and things like that. I'm not trying to high horse this because y'all, I will go to the grocery store and there's times where I'm going to buy the pre-packaged things because I need that convenience and I need that cheaper option. I will go to restaurants where I know they're probably using something that I would not 100% buy myself and cook at home for my family. But sometimes the ease, the convenience, the, the situation warrants me eating that, buying that, whatever else. <clears throat> Nobody is 100% perfect. And if you want to sit there and say you are, you're full of shit. Nobody is 100% perfect on this earth. So 
I want to point out that these bioengineered ingredients, if you look at the back of a Campbell's can of soup right now, I used to love Campbell's. Their chicken noodle soup was my absolute favorite. My Nana, when I was little, she would get those condensed cans, not the big honking ones that you can buy now, but those little condensed cans where it was add one can of chicken noodle soup and one can of water or the bean with bacon was my absolute favorite when I was little. Bean with bacon soup and then a grilled cheese sandwich on the side. That is a childhood favorite of mine um off topic but i'm sure you guys have childhood favorite meals also that if you were to try to go and eat those today it would not taste the same i tried that i went and bought the campbell's bean with bacon soup probably three or four months ago because i wanted to recreate a meal that my nana would have made me when i was younger but before she passed away this year will be i think this year will be nine years since she passed away i'm pretty sure it still feels like yesterday most of the time which is if you've ever lost anybody, you, you understand exactly what I mean. Um, but I went and I tried to recreate this thing because I was thinking about her. It was around the time of her birthday and I wanted to have something along those lines, right? So I went to Walmart, which I try not to go to Walmart if I don't absolutely have to, but I went to Walmart. They Shelves were stocked. I'll put it out there like that. Shelves were stocked. I got a can of the Campbell's bean with bacon soup. I took it home. It did not taste the same. Now, some people could say, well, your taste buds have changed from the time you were a child to the, till now. But also, there is the fact that a lot of those same ingredients that were used in the 80s and in the 90s are no longer those same ingredients because they have been tweaked. They have been altered. They have been changed since then. The bioengineered foods, if you look at the back of a Campbell's soup can now, it will say contains bioengineered ingredients. Same thing if you look at Progresso. Same thing if you look at a bunch of other different soups that I can't think of the names off the top of my head. Generally speaking, the ones that you notice that have those bioengineered foods, it won't tell you what the bioengineered food is. Some places, some manufacturers will say bioengineered corn, bioengineered sugar, bioengineered wheat, bioengineered, what was the other one I see all the time? Green beans. There are certain things that are bioengineered that you will start finding more and more in your food. Now, Again, if you are to go out and buy your own things, your own individual ingredients and make stuff yourself, you're not going to see that as often. If you buy organic, it's non-GMO. You cannot have a GMO and organic thing. It does not work. If it is organic, it is automatically non-GMO. However, non-GMO does not mean organic. So make sure you fully understand that before you go shopping, thinking to yourself that as long as you're buying things that say non-GMO, you're doing well, they're still not organic. They're still going to have the pesticides. They're still going to have the chemicals and everything else. Organic stuff has, I would say there's still a small, small percentage of something in there. It's almost impossible in this day and age with the, what's in our air, what's in our water, what's in our rain, what's in the soil uh, that's been seeped all around, you know, it's almost impossible to buy something that is 100% pure, clean, whatever else. You're probably going to get organic stuff that has, I would say they're probably 95% organic. You might have a little, a little something in there, but it's still a lot better than most of the stuff that they have out there on the shelves these days. You have to pay attention to what they're not telling you. The things that say contains a bioengineered food and does not specify what that bioengineered food is, I personally will not buy if I can avoid it at all costs. Like if there is no way at all to avoid it, I know I've bought things before that I could not avoid because I needed them for something that I was making and it was legitimately the only option and I did not know a way to make it without it, whatever. And, and then I've, I've bought it. But now the more research I do, the more I look at things, the more I understand kind of what these corporations are doing to us in the name of profit, I, I find myself working harder at reading the labels of things if I have to buy something processed to ensure that I'm not buying something that just says contains a bioengineered ingredient. It used to say um, genetically modified. Now it says bioengineered. I don't know which one is worse. They're both the same thing, but the phrasing has been changed. I guess a lot of people look at bioengineered as not sounding as bad as genetically modified, although they mean the exact same thing. Now, there are people out there who will tell you that a genetically modified or bioengineered is not a big deal. It's not a bad thing. It just means that they have spliced these things and, and tweaked these things so that maybe corn will grow all year long instead of only in whatever it used to grow in or um, green beans will stay fresher longer. They're going to tell you that genetically modified and bioengineered things are, are just as healthy and just as good for you as non messed with things. And I don't know that there's enough 
research, actual research out there done by independent labs or independent people for me to believe it. Because right now the people telling you that it's okay for you are the same people who are making it and profiting off of it. So of course they're going to tell you it's fine for you to eat. Of course they're going to tell you not to worry about it and just go about your, your daily life. But these are also the same people who tell you that drinking the water um, from the Ohio River, the Mississippi River, or the Delaware right after there's been a chemical spill in it isn't a big deal. It's fine. Go drink it. You'll be fine. Just boil it for a second. Although boiling water, I'm pretty sure, actually ups the fluoride in it, like does something, changes it to something, so then it's actually worse for you when you drink it. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm pretty sure that's what I read before, and now my brain is escaping me, so I'm going to have to look into that. If you guys know, leave a comment. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, if I'm ever wrong, I'd much rather you guys let me know than let me sit here and think that I'm right on something because I don't want to give you false information ever, ever in time. But at Walmart today, walking through there, the bread is the new, like the, the thing that bothers me the most is a lot of us eat sandwiches. We eat subs, we eat regular sandwiches. There's bread and all kinds of stuff. Bread is one of those easy, easy staples that you can pretty much make anything with it. You can make a whole meal as long as you have some sort of bread. You can throw anything in between it. You got mayonnaise, make a mayonnaise and cheese sandwich. You got peanut butter, you can have just peanut butter and bread. It's kind of the easier route when you're on a fixed income, low budget, whatever, is to go with bread. Here's the problem though. Bread back in the day when it was made in your mom's kitchen, your grandma's kitchen was made from what flour water yeast salt maybe and then you were done you have bread maybe I'm missing an ingredient but then you have bread and if you don't eat it within a couple days it goes bad it will mold and you have to throw it out today's bread today's manufactured bread that is designed to not squish that is designed to last two or three weeks has so many chemicals in it that it will kill you as opposed to nourish you so now I have my family and I, we're trying very hard to avoid bread that is not a homemade or a made in restaurant kind of bread. I don't want the ones that are sitting on the shelves for two weeks and still have another week that they're good. I want the fresh bread. I want the bread that has ingredients in it that I can, um, that I can pronounce, that I can find and make on my own. I don't want the bread that is impossible to make because it includes all these chemicals that you can't buy on your grocery store shelves. You know what I mean? So I think that as people, what we need to do is really pay attention to what we are buying, not just what we're putting in our bodies. Generally speaking, they will go hand in hand, but you need to pay attention to what you're buying. And I know, again, it's harder for a lot of people on fixed incomes because a lot of these more affordable foods are going to have those bioengineered ingredients, which is why they're more affordable. It's cheaper to go with the mass produced something than it is to go with the fresh something. The fresh is always going to cost you more. There's guys putting a refrigerator into a truck over here. I don't think you can see it, but they about dropped it off the truck. I just heard a whole bunch of yelling. So that's interesting. Y'all can see the guy. I think he's over there. I don't think they dropped it. Okay, no, we're good. Um, distracted. Sorry about that. But walking through Walmart, not even talking about the bread. I went and looked at the, the soups, the cereals. Literally everything that we buy has some sort of bioengineered ingredient in it. Almost everything. And it's going to become more prevalent the more they go through and say, well, you know, we can't have all this agricultural land because, you know, all the, the green, the ozone, it's messing up the ozone. So now we need to make all this stuff in labs instead. Before you know it, everything you eat is going to be lab grown. There's not going to be anything they're putting in the ground anymore. So if you have the ability to grow your own stuff, do it, obviously. But also when you're going to the grocery stores, whether it is Walmart, Publix, Kroger, Albertsons, Whole Foods, Sprouts, doesn't really matter where, make sure that you are looking at the back of packages, make sure you are trying to avoid anything that says contains a bioengineered ingredient, contains a gen uh, genetically modified ingredient. Try to avoid those as much as humanly possible. And I can promise you, you will start to feel healthier at the same time because generally speaking, if you're staying away from things that contain those, you're going to end up buying products that have less chemicals in them to begin with. And it's about to start raining. I will say Whole Foods is the only place I've been where I have not seen anything that contains a bioengineered ingredient, which is also probably why they are a little pricier than other places, but I've never found anything there with bioengineered ingredients. I believe the whole thing there is that everything is non-GMO. Not everything's organic, but everything is supposed to be non-GMO. 
just pay attention when you're out shopping because these chemicals they're putting in there, they're not telling you everything. When they say, when it says contains a bioengineered ingredient, it does not have to be those ingredients they list there, those main ingredients. It could be a chemical that they're not telling you about. I remember about a year ago, um, Ortega, the, the brand Ortega was in the headlines because um, they had three different drugs that were in their foods that was not in the label. It was not in the food label. It was not telling you what it was. And I wish I'd brought my iPad down here so I could tell you guys exactly what it is. I'll put a link um, in the in, in the description or the pinned comment so you guys can read it. But just like cheese, there's something in manufactured processed cheese that is supposed to, it's, I don't know exactly what it is. I don't remember the name of it, but it's basically gives you like a dopamine kind of response. The same way like crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, is that how it works? I've never done these things. So I don't know if that's the right word. Crack cocaine. Are they the same or are they different? Either way, it does. It gives you the same mental um, high, if you will, that a drug does. Something that is put into processed cheese, and they found that in this Ortega stuff last year, that there were drugs in there that weren't in the labels that were giving people that same feeling. Where if they weren't constantly consuming these things, they were they didn't feel that high. They didn't feel um, that that um, oh that's thunder. Technically, where I'm at right now is under severe weather. There's supposed to be hail, lightning, 60 mile per hour winds. So that's interesting and, and fun here for Florida. Anybody in the Florida area or in the path of a storm, be safe tonight. Um, but I'm, I'm going to put that link in the in the uh, pin comment for you guys so you can look at it. But again. What I want to say is just when you're going into places, look at your labels. I know Walmart, they have some foods that will have a warning, like a danger label on the back. I'm pretty sure those are the ones that are manufactured in California. California, as far as I know, is the only place where I have seen where they have to, where they put these labels on there that say, this has been known to cause cancer. This has been known to cause birth defects. And I know there's probably other places that do it, but most of the times I see it, it's because California has made it that it must be written on packaging. So that's just interesting also that they are knowingly putting things into our food that cause birth defects, that cause cancer. There are things in our foods that other countries refuse to allow into their foods because they care about their their citizens. Their, you know what I mean? Whereas here, profit over people. They could give two craps about us as long as they are making money in the long run. And the easiest way for them to make money is to make sure that we stay unhealthy, we stay sick, and we stay needing them and their doctors and their drugs. So Stay away from bioengineered foods as much as you possibly can. Buy fresh fruits, uh, organic ingredients, buy farm-raised meats, buy pasture-raised uh, eggs and chickens and everything else. Support your local farmers and just try to do the, the healthy things that you can do. I know, like I said, it's impossible to do it all at once. It's not cheap to buy everything fresh. Do what you can when you can, okay? Don't be afraid to use your freezer. Don't be afraid to freeze dry things. Don't be afraid to put things in those little uh, sealed where it sucks out all the oxygen so you can save it for later. Vacuum seal. Don't be afraid to do that either. Your health is more important than their profits. That's really what matters in the long run. Remember, your health is more important than their profits. I love you all. Have a good night. Goodbye.